A common question over in the Hueforge Discord is how can I prevent my Hueforge prints from being very floppy? So like here's one that I printed and I believe its total thickness is about 1.5 millimeters. Um, and as you can tell where there isn't a lot of infill in the middle, it's it's kind of floppy, right? So the question is how, how can we prevent that? How, what can we do to, to strengthen that on the bottom layer? Um, so my solution is to do so in the slicer. Um, so we will jump over and look at this project in Hueforge first to get an idea of why it's like this in the first place. And we'll discuss a few things that you could do within the slicer itself to, to prevent it. But then those times where the only way to get the outcome for the picture you've got is to, is to make it very thin. Um, so we'll look at what it takes to do that on the slicer side. Um, I personally use bamboo slicer, so uh, we'll go over how to do it in that. It should be pretty similar for all your major slicers, um, bamboo, orca, super slicer, prusa slicer. They're all pretty similar. Um, Cura might be a little different, but uh, for the most part, it should be similar as well. So let's jump over into Hueforge and take a look at this project. So as you can see, our max depth is in fact set to 1.5 and our actual max depth is 1.3. So it's probably a little bit thinner than, than 1.5 millimeters. And you can see that our base layer of black here is where we have um, only 0 0.05 millimeters of thickness. So that's pretty thin, um, but it's where I was able to achieve um, the colors that I wanted and the separation between them. Now, obviously you could increase your max depth and then readjust your sliders. Um, but personally, I don't like to mess with that stuff once I've got the project dialed in to a point where I really like the way it looks. So I, I like to keep this as it is and do this on the slicer side. So let's jump over into Bamboo Slicer um, where we can look at that method that I have for thickening that base layer. All right, so over in Bamboo Slicer, we're going to import the STL from that project. I like to start out by just changing that color to be the base color, and then get an angle here, and we can hit, click the cut function. And I like to use the base layer just as a starting point to keep things simple. So I set this to 0 0.16. And so essentially what we're gonna be doing is cutting off the that first layer, that 0 0.16 layer. Um, we also want to check mark the cut to parts. So that way it keeps them in one file and they're not trying to lay on the base plate each on their own and they'll stack on top of each other. So we're gonna go ahead and perform that cut. And what it's done is it has put the, like I said, it's put those on top of each other. Um, so we're gonna switch over to the object uh, panel here. And this second part here, the B, should be that base layer that we cut off. And they are basically perfectly stacked on each other. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale this and we're gonna uncheck uniform scale. And say I wanted to add about a millimeter. And I'm going to keep it in solid round numbers like that because it makes it easier when calculating the layers for your filament swaps. So I'm going to add a one to that existing 0.16 layer um, and then hit enter. And the only problem with scaling that is it's now raised the bottom of that first object up to be on the build plate. And so we now have the two objects clipping through each other. And we can tell that by clicking on the top part and changing that filament to another color. And you can now see how they are clipping through each other. So we wanna prevent this. Um, the good news is this movement that we have to make is pretty simple to calculate it as well. Um, we just need to go to the move function. And as you can see, it's saying that this is at 0.8, 0 .08 millimeters off the build plate. And so we need to just add half of the distance that we added to the scale. So 
In our case here, it's just going to be 0 0.58 millimeters. So we're just adding 0 0.5 to that existing 0 0.08. And now you can see they're lined up very nicely, um, not overlapping and no gap there. You want to make sure you have no gap there um, and also no overlapping because what you'll have with overlapping is you'll be you'll be getting a an issue where that base piece that we made is cutting up through your other layers. So it's just it's important to get these layers to to line up right there. So that should give us lined up where we need. Um, we can go ahead and just change this back to black and we can perform a slice. And we can add our color swaps like normal. While that's coming up, I'm going to open up our uh, project describe. And we can see the original settings that these needed to be uh, filament swapped at. And so we are going to, we are just going to make sure that these are now one millimeter higher than what they were. And while that's doing that, I'm going to open up a second Bamboo Studio just to slice this same project. Oh, and it's done. Um, but we want to slice the same project to show that it is actually still producing the same outcome from the project and not altering our layer swaps in any way. So here's our second Bamboo Studio. And we will open up that same file. change that filament and we'll have this one slicing while we are adjusting these settings. I'm going to uncheck the seams and so we need our first filament swap to be at 1.56. Which is right here and we'll swap to the dark gray and slice again and then our next filament swap needs to be at 1.68 and this might be going a little bit slow because I have two slicers going at once all right so we'll swap at 1.68 for our light gray color and slice and then our final swap will be at two millimeters because we are adding one to that so right at two millimeters perform our final swap and re-slice And just drag that to the top so we now have our full view. And now we will perform those same swaps on our original project unaltered. So we'll add our first color swap from black to dark gray and slice. And I guess this is probably out of view. Let me bring it up. There we go. And then our second swap is at that 0, 0.68, the light gray, and right at one millimeter for our final swap. And place. and drag that to the top. 
And now I'd like to just confirm that nothing is altered between these two. Um, and we can do that just by zooming in on some of the detail here and just ensuring that it all looks essentially the same. Now it looks like we probably added an odd number of layers. So our top layers are now 180 degrees out from each other, but the outline of those does look slightly altered. Oh, we're not at the top. <laughs> there we go. Um, so as you can see, just that top layer here, it has flipped 180 degrees on that top plane, but all of our detail in her face here is still the same. Um, and we can just confirm that with some of these other, other areas like up here in the tree, where it definitely has all the same outlines as before. So now we have our project at 2.32 millimeters versus 1.32. So that is one method you can use for getting a little extra on your prints if you're going to be having them loose like this. Obviously, um, if you're going to be putting them into some kind of picture frame, um, this one here is printed. It is a file created by somebody over on the Discord or Hue Forge. Um, so I highly recommend checking it out. It is on printables. Um, so this this method when you're doing this you don't necessarily have to worry too much about it being um, thicker but just know that this is one option you can use to keep it from being too thin so if you have any questions feel free to jump in the discord if you it is a private discord so if you do have hue forge and you have questions jump in if not there is a facebook group that um is not private that you can jump into and ask questions um, before buying the software. So I uh, hope to see you guys around. And if you are in the Discord, say hi.